also already have my 10th Photoshop action. Here's how you can use it for skill touching in Photoshop. The first thing you are going to do is come to your actions right here. And if you can find your action right here, just come to your windows and click on action right here. I'm just going to load up. And if you don't have this action, I'll be leaving the link where you can download this action in the description below. And also, if you don't know how to install this action in Photoshop, I'll be leaving the link to a video where you can watch how to install this action in Photoshop. So to use this action, I'm just going to delete everything I did for this image. And the first thing I'm going to do for this image is to remove the blemishes. So once I come to my action, inside this action, we have the focus separation 16 bits and the focus separation 8 bits. So if your image is 16 bits, just click on focus separation 16 bits. And if your image is 8 bits, click on focus separation 8 bits. And you can look at this place right here to see if your image is 8 bits or 16 bits like that. Now to use the focus separation to remove your blemishes, I'm just going to duplicate my layer by pressing on Ctrl J. And just click on focus separation 16 bits because this image is 16 bits. Now for your Gaussian blur radius, you can use any Gaussian blur radius you want for your image. But the thing is, if you want your image to be smooth, use a lower Gaussian blur radius. While if you want to rotate texture your image, use a higher Gaussian blur radius. So just look for that sweet spot that works for you. So for this kind of image, I'm going to be using 9 for this particular image right here. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to run the focus separation action again and use a lower number. Okay, I'm going to click Okay, now after we run this focus separation action, remember I want to remove the blemishes first. So, you are going to get this layer right here. We have our low frequency, we have our brush layer, we have our high texture, and we have our high texture copy. Now to remove your blemishes with this action, make sure your high texture copy layer is selected. And just zoom in to the image and pick your close thumb tool. With your close thumb tool selected, make sure your mode is on normal. Opacity is set to 100, flow is set to 100. Align is checked, example is on current layer. After that, just increase your brush size by pressing on the square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size. And just press alternate to sample from a close by area. So once you press alternate, just click to sample from a close by area and just brush over the blemishes you want to remove. So alternate to sample, click and just brush over the blemishes you want to remove like this. So let me just quickly show you the before and after what we just did so you can see. So check this place out. So this is the before and this is the after. So basically this is how you can actually remove blemishes from your image using this my action focus separation. It's easy and it's super smart. All right. So I'm just going to do this for the role of the image. So alternate to sample and just paint. Alternate to sample and just paint like that. Okay. Now let's see before and after. So this is the before and this is the after the before and the after you can see we've moved the blemish for this image and i'll come back to my action again and this time i want to use micro dodge and burn to fix those parts of the eyes that are looking too dark and those parts of the image that are looking too dark or too bright with micro dodge and burn so once you click on the action just click on tls dodge and burn right here i just going to load the dodge and burn action so just click on the dodge pick your normal brush tool this time make sure you're also using a soft hand brush Make sure your mood is on normal, opacity set to 100, and just take your flow to 2% or 3%. But I use 2% and make sure smoothing is on 10. Zoom in on the image and dodge where you want to dodge. So make sure your foreground color is set to white because the layer mask is on black. So make sure your foreground color is set to white when you use your normal brush to dodge and burn. All right now, you can see this part of the eyes are looking too dark. I'm just going to dodge it like this. And if I just show you the front after, you, can, you are going to see the difference. So this is the before. And the after the before and the after so basically i'm just going to do this for all the part of the image that are looking too bright or too dark just to even it out so if i come to my bone i'm just going to burn this part a little bit and also i'm going to burn this part right here a little bit okay Just look at your image and see where you need to dodge and where you need to burn and just do it like that so this is my code that i'm burn and i'm going to burn this part right here i'm going to dodge this part like this hey okay. all right so now let's see the before and after so this is before my code that i'm burn and after micro dodge and burn, before 
and after. So that's how you can use the dodge and burn in my action to do your micro dodge and burn. Now what I want to do next, I want to use mixer brush to smoothen out the skin. So I'm going to go to my action again and click on Tillens Frequency Operation 16 bits. And just run that Frequency Operation again. You use the radius of about 9 and click on OK. Now make sure your brush here layer is selected and turn off your high texture layer right here. So once you turn it off, you are going to see only the color of the image and the image is going to look blurry like this. So just pick your mixer brush tool. Make sure your clean brush after each stroke is selected. My weight is on 30, my load is on 20, my mix is on 90, mix doesn't really matter. My flow is on 30 and this place right here is 10 and sample all layer is selected. Now the reason why sample all layer is selected is because we are working on an empty layer. So if I turn off this sample all layer and I just try to use my mixer brush to brush on the image, nothing is going to happen. Nothing is going to happen because we are working on an empty layer. So make sure sample all layer is selected. It's very important. So once you get that settings, just use your square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size according to the part of the image you want to work on. So if I want to work on the highlight on the cheek right here, I'm just going to reduce my brush size to fit that highlight on the cheek and just brush like that. And also if I want to work on the bigger portion of the image, I'm just going to increase my brush size and work on the bigger portion of the image just like that. And you can also zoom in and zoom out when you are brushing if you want. So I'm just going to brush on this image with my mixer brush too. Remember, I'm painting the highlight separately. I'm brushing the shadow separately and also I'm just brushing the metals and the transitions separately just to make the image smooth. Now the key right here is not to brush your shadows into your highlights and your highlights into your shadows. So just be careful so you don't brush shadows into highlights or highlights into shadow. Okay? Okay, now let's see our before and after. So, this is our before and our after. Our before and after. And if you feel it's not smooth enough, you can as well run under focus separation again on top of this one and just reduce the progression blur radius and brush it again to make it smooth if that's what you want. So basically, that's how you can smoothen your skin using my action. Now, the next thing we have inside this action is our eyes and teeth. So if you want to whiten your eyes and teeth, all you have to do is come to the action and just click on eyes and teeth whitening. I just going to load that action and all you have to do is pick your normal brush tool with your normal brush tool selected just take your flow back to 100 percent or pass the 100 percent make sure you're using the soft hand brush and just paint on the white part of the eyes just like this remember with your white brush selected make sure your foreground color is set to white and not black and just paint on the white part of the eyes just like this okay and also, you can do the same thing for the teeth, like so. Now, see the before and the after. But I feel it's too much, so I'm just going to reduce the opacity just like this, okay? Before and after. Okay, I think I like it like this. So that's for the eyes and teeth whitening. Now, another thing we have inside this action is the color correction. Now, to use the color correction, let's say the face of your subject is different from the hand of your subject. All you have to do is click on this color correction action. I'm just going to open, just click on this gradient right here, not the layer mask. Click on the gradient to right here and click on properties. I'm just going to open the gradient properties. Now all you have to do is click on this gradient properties. And this place is our shadow, this place is our mittens, and this place is our highlights. Now you have to select a color from the shadow. So I'm going to click on shadow right here and just select any colors from the shadow. I'm going to click on this place right here as a shadow. Then I click on the mid-tunes, select any colors from the mid-tunes and just click on here like this as the mid-tunes. And also the highlights, click on it and select any part of the image that is highlight, which is this cheek right here. I'm going to click on it. So right now I have the colors of our shadows, our mid-tunes and our highlights. So I'm going to click on OK and just close these properties and just come to my layer mask. Now with my normal brush selected and my foreground is set to white, I'm just going to paint on the skin of the image like that to reveal that effect just to even as the colors of the skin to make the color look even remember don't paint on the lips just paint on only the skin of the image okay now i'm going to do the same thing for the hand like so and if you feel you made a mistake like this you can just pick your eraser tool right here and just erase it from where you don't want it Sorry, take your eraser to soft hand brush. The edges are too harsh. Just take the soft hand brush 
you just paint it out of where you don't want or with the normal brush selected just switch to your black brush by pressing x on your keyboard to switch to black and white so now that it's on black if i just paint it's going to remove that effect if i press x again it's going to bring back that effect if i paint just like that okay and after that i'm going to click on my properties right here and if you can't find your properties all you have to do is come to your windows right here and just click on properties right here it's going to open your properties for you and just feather it a little bit like this to make the edges soft okay now that we have our soft edges i'm going to come to my blend mode change it from normal to color and then just reduce the opacity until i feel it's okay so i think 15 works for me so this is the before and this is the after so that's how you can use the color correction inside this my action now we have the sharpen right here now if you want to add sharpen to your image all you have to do is click on sharpen right here i'm just going to add sharpen to your image as you can see so the before and the after the before and the after but it's looking too much you can just reduce the opacity if you feel it's too much but well, i won't be adding sharpen to this image because i feel it's looking good already so i'm not going to delete the sharpen layer but basically that's how you can use the sharpen inside this my action now we also have the rich tone right here now this rich tone is if you want to add contrast to your image so just click on this rich tone right here and just going to add that rich contrast to your image and if you feel it's too much you can just reduce the opacity even more like this if you feel it's too much now this is the before and this is the after the before and the after all right so that's for the rich tone another thing we have inside this action is the noise so if you want to add digital noise to your image because i like the adding the channels to my image if you want to add it all you have to do is come to the action again and just click on noise right here i'm just going to add digital noise to your image as you can see so this is the before and the after if you feel it's too much you can just reduce the opacity the way you want it okay now the next one we're talking about is this unsharpened mask for face and for eyes and lips so if you want to add punch to your image all you have to do is create a stamp visible layer by pressing the ctrl shift on it e and just click on this unsharpened mask for face and just going to load that action all you have to do is pick your normal brush tool with your layer mask selected make sure your opacity is 100 flow is set to 100 make sure your foreground color is set to white and just paint on the face and just going to add that pop on the face only the face as you can see the before and the after the before and the after that's for the face and if you feel it's too much you can just reduce the opacity so the before and the after so that's for the unsharpened mask so we have another which is called unsharpened eyes and teeth mask so this one is just for the eyes the lips and this part of your nose so to use that action all you have to do is create another stamp visible layer by pressing on ctrl shift alternate e and just click on this unsharpened eyes and lips mask i'm just going to load that action this time pick a normal brush too Make sure you just brush on only the eyes this part of the nose and the lips just to add that punch to the lips and the eyes so as you can see this is the before and this is the after just take a look at the eyes just take a look at the eyes and the lips so this is the before and the after the before and the after you can see the punch it gives the image so you can just reduce the opacity if you feel it's too much this is how you can use this my action for scary touching inside of photoshop Click on this video right here to watch how you can download and install this action to Photoshop. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.